What's up, people? I'm Shaggy, the Opinionated Hippie, and today I'm going to be... This is part 41 of my ranking and reviewing Frank Zappa's guitar solos within the context of an album. Um, and we are on... Uh, going in no particular order, just as my as my whimsy... I don't know. Just following whatever I feel like listening to. And number 41, and this is uh, Frank Zappa meets the Mothers of Prevention. Uh, 1986, did this come out? 1985, November 85. Um, only two solos on here. Um, I, I reviewed this album elsewhere on the channel a couple years ago. Um, I, I like the idea of the CD version of the album, which is uh, full band tracks and clavier tracks. One like sort of epic, how long is it? 12 minutes, 12 minute piece with like... Um, audio things from Frank's testimony in front of Congress, in front of the PMRC, like full bands and clavier stuff, Ike Willis coming in and doing some like sort of like talking and narration type stuff. I like this CD version, which mixed to the sort of live band stuff. You have live bands, some Sinclavier pieces, some live band, a Sinclavier piece, live band, Sinclavier, you know, you mixed it up. The vinyl version had all the live stuff on one side, less Sinclavier choices, but all of them on the other side. I didn't like that balance as much. I think the CD one is intriguing, but ultimately kind of doesn't work because the material's not that strong. But the two solos on here, which is what I'm really here to talk about, are fantastic. One of them, the one that's at number one, might have made uh, my top 10 released during his lifetime guitar solo solos. If that makes any sense. Uh, might have Might have been on that list. Uh, but here they are. Uh, I'm not going to put up the list at the end because I'm pretty sure you can remember them. There's only two. Though I will, once I'm done discussing these two, put up um, where this album falls among the other 40 guitar solo only wise. Uh, number uh, two out of the two is Alien Orifice, which always always produces a great solo, especially in 81 and 82. That dun, 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 and Frank's just soloing over it. Comes back around again. Dun, 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 dun. Comes back around and Frank's just soloing all over the place. Um, a shorter solo on this uh, officially released version than many of the live versions. That sort of cycle would go around maybe a couple more times and Frank would stretch out sometimes a little bit longer. But still, just the, the vamp, Frank's attack, the way it just falls in the middle of this pretty like highly sort of complex, dense sort of instrumental song. Um, it's never a disappointing solo. I think Frank always delivers. Um, again, you're not, you know what you're going to get, you know, and Frank's delivering and he's kind of doing some of the same ideas and themes and motifs every time he plays this solo. Uh, but the overall just everything about it just always, always works for me. And um, it's a pretty tight little vamp that Frank's in, um, but it just, it works and it sounds good and Frank attacks good and I always enjoy it. Um, there are better live versions than, than this version, but this is a good version because every Alien Orifice version is good. Um, I'm assuming this is a live solo um, that's like taken from another show and just kind of dropped on here as Frank was wont to do in almost all of his 80s stuff. Um, I know the next solo I'm talking about, I'm almost positive is a live solo that's dropped in there. Maybe not. Maybe it is a thing. Uh, where Do we know for a fact whether this is where this is from? Um, no, we just know the basic track was sometime in 81 and 82. I'm going to think it's a live solo that Frank dropped in there, though I'm not sure we know exactly where. Or maybe somebody does. If you know where these solos come from, let me know. I don't, I'm pretty sure this is a live one, um, a live one that's dropped in there. Uh, so that's number two, Alien Orifice. Uh, number one, uh, which is definitely from an 81 tour, a solo from 81. I think the entire performance is from 81 shows towards the end of the tour, November, December shows, um, is What's New in Baltimore. And way back when I did a list of my top 10 released while he was alive uh, solos. This one might have been in that top 10. Uh, videos elsewhere on this channel. If you want to know what the other nine are, this one is on there. I'll give that away. I just love this solo. Um, it almost sounds patriotic. If Frank was going to write a patriotic solo, I think this is what it would sound like. It has a very sort of rising energy to it where it's just like, Frank's just like going to like, almost like he's climbing to the top of Iwo Jima and he's got the flag. And when he's finally done with the solo, doing that awesome like sort of 
kind of dun, you kind of playing the chords along with it and the band kind of going along with the band, getting this sort of chugging vibe towards the end. It almost feels like they've crested the peak of Iwo Jima or planting the flag to play into a, a manipulated patriotic moment in U.S. history. Uh, that movie by Clint Eastwood was, was pretty good. Um, anyways, uh, yeah. So it has that very uplifting feel. Uh, Frank's playing on this is always good, even if it's like a short sort of that does humor belong in music, which is just like the bare bones version of like, you get the basic of what's new in Baltimore with the solo in there, but it's still good because it's a what's new in Baltimore solo. This solo is just fantastic. It's got that uplifting feel. You just feel like you're going somewhere. It's probably, I think of all Frank's solos, it's the most Trey Anastasio type solo. There's a fish vibe to it. You know, when Trey's in those like pockets where you know you're generally gonna get the same solo every time, but you feel like that emotional lift of the solo. I'm trying to think of a solo that matches that. Like it reminds me of Trey, but again, I was like, well, what solo exactly would remind me of that? Um, not really sure. Maybe like a rut, maybe like a maybe like the latter half of like a hairy hood or a slave when things are just going, but no, that doesn't even work really. I'm not sure. I know there's a Trey solo that reminds me of this solo, um, but just because it is a generally composed, directional, we're going and everybody's working together for like the same goal. Like Frank's with the rhythm section. He's not trying to break down boundaries or really challenge anything. He's just kind of going with it. And it ends up, you're just like, you're just like, you want to like pump your fist at the end. Like, yeah, what's new in Baltimore? You're just celebrating. Great. Fantastic solo. Hands down, one of my favorite. Uh, and that's number one. Number two is Alien Orifice. Number one is What's New in Baltimore. Those are the only two solos on this. On this inconsistent but intriguing, maybe good, maybe not good. I mean, like the rest of the stuff on here, just to give a quick review. The Sinclair pieces, are, I think, are some of his weakest. I don't like I Don't Care. Uh, the song that uh, Johnny Guitar Watson is on, I think he's... He's poorly served on here. Um, We're Turning Again is a fun song. I don't like Yo Cats. I know people who do like Yo Cats. It's sort of about studio musicians. It's got this, oh, Yo Cats lounge, kind of people standing on the corner smoking with sunglasses. Yo Cats. Yeah, that kind of vibe to it. Uh, I do like Porn Wars, the sort of 12 minute collage that has all kind of live, like band music and clavier music excerpts from his PMRC, PMRC, Parent Music Resource, PMRC testimony, all kinds of stuff. Um, an intriguing, but ultimately maybe not successful album. But the two solos are fantastic. Uh, where would I rank this album? Solo-wise among the others. Right at number seven, right above Jazz From Hell, the one I just did on the previous video, only because that Jazz From Hell has one solo. It's fantastic. I do think Once New in Baltimore, I enjoy it more just because it's a, it, it feels like a rare Frank solo. It feels like the most like straightforward, I'm just going to do what a normal guitar player would have done in this situation type solo. And Frank, I don't think normally says what would a normal guitar player do. Still sounds like Frank's guitar playing, so it's fantastic. But what's new in Baltimore really does seem to occupy like its sort of own unique space in Frank's like guitar, his, his vast his vast library of guitar solo vamps and ideas and energies. There's something I think kind of unique about what's new in Baltimore. So yeah, it falls at number seven. But anyways, that's it. Managed to do nine minutes on two solos. Good on me. I'm not trying to get nine minutes. I just, you know, just rambling at the end of a long, long school day. We're at that point where like we're a month into the school year. So the excitement of being to school is sort of worn off and they're now really happy and comfortable. So now it's like they do what five and six year olds do. They're like, what are the boundaries we can test now? Which, you know, they do it every year. But this this time, there's like next month. This is when I'm like, okay, got to rebuild those boundaries. And then we're off and rolling after that. But anyways, it was a long day. So I'm a little like just kind of frazzled is the word I'm looking for. Yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of these solos. Uh, leave a comment, subscribe, like, and go listen to What's New in Baltimore because especially this version, just absolutely, just fantastic and all around, all around, all around fantastic performance. Anyways, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. Peace. Talk to you later.